All right, people, I've been using the Lenovo Yoga Book 9i for about 24 hours or so, and I've been able to do my initial benchmarks on it. Pretty innovative stuff here with 2.8K dual OLED displays. They are absolutely gorgeous. Here I have the physical keyboard, but of course we have these two displays. You can use it with the virtual keyboard, virtual touchpad. You can move these down, of course, and then you have a little bit of options when it comes to these panels and so forth. So pretty innovative stuff. And then of course you can put it on its included stand here and you get the dual screen madness, of course. You could also use it uh, this way as well, side by side. A lot of options here when it comes to this laptop. So we're gonna find out if this is worth that $2,000 price tag. Now keep in mind, it is a pretty inclusive price tag, including the whole package. You do get this included mouse in the box, which I like, and I think it's necessary when you're using on the dual displays. So we're gonna get into it and more in this unboxing and first look review. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my unboxing and first look review at the brand new Yoga Book 9i here for 2023. Coming up. Now, before we get to the unboxing, I just want to let everyone know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Lenovo. I'm not being sponsored by Lenovo. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Lenovo is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this unit is on loan from Lenovo, and once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. Now, for those interested in picking one up, if you go over to Lenovo's website, it shows available soon, so I don't see any pricing there, but it is showing up at Best Buy here in North America, and that, of course, is coming in at $1,999.99. That's the price as tested with my review unit today. Comes with everything inclusive in the box. We'll get into that in a moment, but for those that are interested, I'll drop a link in the description below for more information and where you can buy one. Now, one thing to note regarding that Best Buy is that the release date, according to that, is June 18th, 2023. At the time of this recording, which is May 21st, 2023, that is when it's showing as far as availability. Again, for those interested, check out the link in the description below. So without further ado, let's get this out of the box. All right, looks like we have a mouse here. We'll get to that in a moment. So it's a nice little Bluetooth mouse. So it shows you the dual screen layout here. And of course I already went over the specs. So let's take this out. Okay, so it looks like we got our power charger here. And I believe this is gonna be 65 watts as you can see there. And it's US prongs of course, USB type C. We'll put that to the side. Here we have the unit itself, little diagram there. This looks like it's gonna be the, maybe the keyboard. So yes, this is the keyboard. Okay, we'll get to that in a moment. A lot of stuff here. So this is gonna be the stand. There it is, there she is. So this is gonna go like this, you see, boom. Okay, so this is where the pen will go. Okay, so it gives you an option there. And then of course you can see it right there. Absolutely gorgeous. Title teal is the color here, folks. This is going to be CNC machined aluminum. And I think this is pretty gorgeous. So let's see if we can open this with one finger. Sort of can, of course I have a slippery table. You can just about do it. So we got some more documentation here and a little diagram, which will help us uh, figure out the different gestures. So eight fingers to bring up the virtual keyboard, three fingers to bring up the virtual touchpad. Okay. And remove the Bluetooth keyboard before closing the two displays together. Okay. Upper part. We'll, we'll, we'll figure all this out. And there she is. So we got dual displays here. Goes on to this little stand here that they give you in the box. But I do like this, all right? So I do like the option that they give you here, having a dual display of like this in a vertical mode. And then of course you could always put it like this and you have two side-by-side -side panels like that. So that's actually pretty nice. I do have a lot of studio lights here. Of course, you don't need to use this, just use it like a laptop. So let's see how that's gonna work. That brings up the virtual keyboard. Now let's take a look and a listen here at it. 
I don't know if I would use this, you know, all the time, but in a pinch it might work. Of course, we have a physical Bluetooth keyboard. Okay, so I have to place eight fingers and pull the keyboard down. So this is three, this is eight, and that brings it down. Okay, let's put the keyboard on it. Okay, so let me just get this turned on here. Right now it's off. Now it's on. There it goes. So it's working. Now if I put it over here, doing this all real time here. So now we have a, a virtual mouse pad here or a touch pad. And it has a little bit of feedback on it. So pretty interesting. Okay. But they do give you the mouse as well. Okay, let's check out the port selection. We're gonna start off on the left side where you get one USB Type-C Thunderbolt 4 port that is full function, supporting data charge and display out. That is the only port on the left side. Moving over to the right side, you get your power button and you also get your kill switch for the webcam. And then you get two more USB Type-C ports that are also Thunderbolt 4 ports and they are also full function as well. Notably missing, no USB-A, no SD card reader, and there's no headphone jack for those wondering. Now the build is really excellent with the all metal CNC aluminum used here and this title teal is absolutely gorgeous although you will notice some fingerprints after a while just keep that in mind. Now as far as the weight is concerned 1.34 kilograms or 3.15 pounds so it's pretty easy to take with you on the go although all in you're looking at over four and a half pounds not that light of course with the keyboard the pen the charger and of course the stand so that is just something to keep in mind as far as the travel weight but all told pretty portable device at the end of the day okay let's talk about the stars of the show yes plural stars as we have dual oled displays they're both 2.8k resolution they are both absolutely gorgeous now these are of course very responsive touch displays in their own right they are independently controlled in terms of the brightness and i measured very close to the claimed 400 nits for each of them so that is definitely good in terms of brightness we want to see that and they both have really excellent coverage of the color gamut you're looking at really color accurate displays and they also are great for the content creator who wants to do Lightroom, Photoshop and even some video editing and certainly color grading. These are very accurate in terms of the color and again great coverage of that color gamut. And with the OLED displays, you're getting the really deep blacks, the super vibrant colors that just seem to pop off the display and the really high contrast. It's all there. Now, a couple of things to note, there is no option for high refresh rate. These are 60 hertz refresh rate, of course, and that's not surprising here since we have dual OLED displays and we have to consider battery life as well since this is a mobile device in the end of the day. So I am not surprised they didn't go with a higher refresh rate. So just keep that in mind. And they both support the pen, of course. The pen itself does come in the box, which is great, and it supports 4,096 levels of pressure sensitivity, and it's worked well for taking notes, sketching an artwork, in the initial time that I've had it so far. I'll bring you more on that later on, but of course the pen is working very well. So this is the camera on the brand new Lenovo Yoga Book 9i here for 2023. The dual OLED displays on this are absolutely gorgeous. And this of course is a 1080p camera. We're looking at 30 frames per second. It's IR, meaning you can log in with face recognition with Windows Hello, and I highly recommend it because there is no fingerprint scanner on this. It makes it a lot easier to log in, of course. What do you think about the video quality? What do you think about the audio quality of the array mics? Let me know in the comment section below. One thing to note, there is a shutter switch. If you want more security and privacy, that actually worked out pretty well. Loving having that. And of course, uh, there is a mute button on the keyboard and so forth. So again, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Now, using the virtual keyboard gives you a little bit of haptic feedback, so it's actually worked out better than I expected, but of course, it's not a full replacement in my book when it comes to typing out long documents or emails. For that, I would use the included Bluetooth keyboard with those physical keys, and I thought the tactility was good, the feedback was good, I never felt like my fingers were gonna bottom out. And since it is a Bluetooth keyboard, you don't have to keep it attached. It worked well, detached from the unit, didn't see a lot of latency or anything like that, worked out really well.
Now, what really surprised me was the virtual touchpad, which had some really nice haptic feedback. I didn't expect that, especially with the virtual touchpad. And it worked well when it comes to scrolling and even doing the gestures worked out pretty well. Of course, I think it wouldn't be a total replacement for a physical touchpad or a haptic touchpad that you'd get on a MacBook Pro or something like that, although it did work out pretty well. Now, I do appreciate the fact they do include the mouse in the box at no additional cost, at least here in the United States. So that was a nice little touch to include that. And I think when you're using it in the dual screen mode, having the mouse might make it easier to move between the two displays. So I've had the unit for about 24 hours or so, and I ran a few of the benchmarks already. And as you can see from the Geekbench 6 results, the single multi-core score actually pretty decent for a processor that is, of course, a U-series processor. It's the Core i7-1355U. That is 10 cores, eight efficient cores, and two performance cores. And we're not expecting really high-end performance with a U-series. We're seeing a little bit better battery life, hopefully, and we're seeing a little bit of terms of productivity. You can do everyday tasks, such as Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, it all worked well. And of course, this does have integrated Iris XE graphics, not gonna blow you away in terms of the graphics performance, but it does have Thunderbolt 4 ports that do allow you to add an external GPU if you wanted to, but of course that would add to the overall cost of the unit. But when it comes to things like gaming or high-end 4K video editing, I think it's really not made for that, of course. But if you lower some of the settings, you can probably get some playable frame rates on some of the more popular titles. I'll go over that in the upcoming full review. Now, when I did my live unboxing, I also measured some of the temperatures as we were benchmarking it live on that live stream, of course, and I noticed it didn't get very hot in terms of the overall surface temperatures, never getting overly hot to the touch, so that's been really good. Now, when it comes to fan noise, it got about 44, 45 decibels in the ultra performance mode under heavy load, but in the balance mode, it didn't really notice it all that much. And I was able to run the Time Spy stress test to see if this will thermal throttle under heavy load. It got a 99.6% passing score, meaning it didn't detect any thermal throttling. Nice. Now, as I mentioned, I didn't have this very long, but I was able to do my initial benchmark in terms of battery life, the PC Mark 10 Modern Office battery life test, and it did 11 hours and 20 minutes in the notebook mode. That means I put the physical keyboard on it with the virtual touchpad and ran it like I would any other laptop, and it did 11 hours and 20 minutes with its 80 watt hour battery. And that's actually a really nice result. Of course, I have a lot more testing to do in the different modes with these two displays plays enabled of course i want to see how that's going to do but my initial test in notebook mode 11 hours and 20 minutes i'll take that any day of the week looking really good okay so we're going to play the yoga book 9i first and then we'll do the this one So again, it's all subjective. I think the MacBook wins on that. Pretty good sound on the Yoga Book 9i. So for those wondering, you can definitely use it. No headphone jack on it. Okay, people, let's bring it all home. Lenovo is definitely pushing the envelope once again with what I call the spiritual successor to the Microsoft Surface Neo, that ill-fated dual-screen device that never came to fruition. Well, we're seeing it here in the flesh, of course, and the 24 hours or so that I've been using it, I've actually been pretty impressed with it, although I have to warn you, it may just be a niche device 
device at the end of the day. I don't know if everybody needs dual displays. It's just a matter of your application, your use case scenario. You'll just have to make that decision for yourself. For me, I like having that second display, especially when I want to be more productive, especially when I want to multitask, when I'm doing video editing and things like that. Definitely can see an application here. But again, the $2,000 price tag may scare a lot of people away. And again, most people don't need two displays. But if you're a tech head or geeks like us, you're going to just love the innovation that Lenovo is putting forth here. And you just got to love what they're doing. So I give them a lot of credit here and I look forward to see how they're going to iterate on this. Hopefully they'll stick with it. I'm having a lot of fun so far and I can't wait to bring you my full review. That will be coming very soon. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew and I'll see you in the next video.